Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today we're going to take some of what I've been talking about. I'm going to show you a small circuit called a high side switch. Now this, this circuit's like one of the tools you want to put in your toolbox as a designer. It's got a time and a place when it's useful. It's got a time and a place when it's not. And we'll talk about those differences. So high side switches, we're going to do it simple. All right, let me start by telling you first what a high side switch is. Uh, it switches the VCC, the, the voltage that is highest. Um, in, in digital electronics and some analog, we're uh, real comfortable switching the bottom. If you ever see it, open collector outputs. Uh, we pull to ground. Ground is a known entity. It's usually low impedance, usually low noise. And so uh, we do a lot of connecting the ground to something to turn it on. There's times when you want to actually turn the power on to something. What might be some of those times? Well, um, let's say that you have a low current assembly that battery powered and you want it to stay running. But meanwhile, maybe there's a sensor or something, I don't know, right, that um, uses too much power to leave turned on. Well, I want to be able, using an I.O. pin, to enable the power to that or disable the power to that. <sighs> to do that, I want to make sure I give it a good supply usually. Sometimes you don't need to, but I'm going to want to give it a, a, a voltage maybe very, very similar to the voltage that I have to work with. What if I want to give 5 volts and I've only got 5 volts? I don't have 12 to 5 or 5 to 3. What if I, I may need to keep it low impedance? We don't need the voltage on the sensor changing its output based on how much current it draws. Okay, you'll get erroneous results. So we need something that allows us to kick in a high voltage cleanly with low impedance and a known voltage. And that typically is a high side switch. So let me show you, oh, by the way, what if you want to turn on something like this? I don't see a lot of uh, battery, ma well, battery management, but I don't see, a, a, you know, how to turn these on and off real easy, this being in a Raspberry Pi. Um, well, we can turn it on uh, easily from a high side switch. Turning it off in a way that doesn't crash the memory is a little more problematic. You know, we'll, we'll discuss that. So let me show you some of the options that I looked at to make a high side switch and then why I picked the, the option I did. Here's a couple different technologies that uh, I kind of glance at mentally as, as uh, I think of things like, you know, how do I make a good clean switch? And in the old days, you know, we, we did use a lot of mercury wetted reed relays. Problem is, um, they do have some issues and there's an inductor involved and there's some current flow involved. Uh, bipolar transistors, we learned bipolar means that there's always a voltage drop uh, because there's always a PN junction, hence the bi part. And so if I were to try and use either an NPN or a PNP transistor, I'm going to lose at a minimum 0.3 volts drop using standard parts, um, which means if I start with 5, I'm down to uh, 4.7, which is below my VCC for logic, right? And then uh, we've been talking a lot about FETs, field effect transistors. Now, I happen to know that one of the properties I can select for on an FET is low on resistance. They'll actually tell you RDS. It used to, it's transconductance actually, but we take the reciprocal of that and they just go ahead and print it as a resistor for you. And it does make thinking about it a lot easier. So we're going to look at using either an N-channel FET or a P-channel FET, FET, MOSFET, in, in we'll show the different modes here. Of our three basic MOSFETs, there's the junction FET, kind of the older one, where there's actually a, a, a base just touches. Right? If you remember, it's not insulated. It's not an IG FET, insulated, get, insulated gate metal oxide semiconductor. Uh, so let's throw that out. Depletion mode. Well, that's always on unless I turn it off. Well, that's kind of not what I want. I want something I actually turn on. I don't want this thing defaulting to turning, uh, turning on. I want it to default, default to turning off. So enhancement mode. Of the enhancement mode, we have uh, N-channel and P-channel. Now, if you remember, I said that you can remember which way turns these on by the virtue that if this arrow's not pointing in, it won't pop the bubble. So I can write a bubble here, meaning that this is low to turn on, low from uh, gate to source. This is the gate, this is the source. An N channel is a high to turn on. That means this voltage has to be higher than this. Well, that's a problem if I want to switch 5 volts. I'm going to need a voltage higher than 5 volts to switch it. Now, there's ways that we can do that. I may show you one before we get out of here. Um, but already I'm starting to go, well, that P channel sounds pretty simple. If I just have to, like, make its, its gate lower than the input voltage to turn it on. All right. Here's a high side switch using a, uh, in this case, a P channel MOSFET. I told you it was going to be simple. Uh, if we remember 
the logic of a p-channel if the voltage on the gate is lower than the source and that value is called the voltage gate source threshold if it's lower by more than a certain amount I'm going to show you the spec sheet in a second it, this will turn on actually and in between it'll be turn on in between but we're interested in turning this on all the way to get the properties we want so for a p-channel it's low we'll turn this on and if we release it this resistor will pull it back high so that VN is equals off so when the voltage input is the same on the gate and the source it's definitely off when we exceed the voltage gate source threshold it turns on now had this been an in channel again this voltage would have had to be up here somewhere it would have had to go higher than this would have been the source and uh, if the v voltage gate source threshold is a volt that we would have needed a volt above VN to turn this on and they actually do that they'll make a little charge pump to do that because honestly using in channel devices is a little better they're a little cheaper they're easier to make and the reason simply is their geometries are simpler on the inside because they use electrons for carriers this is using whole flow if you think of little pluses coming out of a battery which is kind of common way to think about this those really are holes and their, their mobility is less than an electron um, with, so with that said I'd think hard before I put just grab a P channel because the in channel really is the bread and butter but for a nice simple little circuit like this um, I'm grabbing a P channel and a resistor and I'm all but done so let me show you this actually working and um, then we'll, we'll show why this is almost magic and I say that because the resistance inside this thing is so small that if I put 5 volts in I'm gonna get almost 5 volts out Here's a selection of p-channel FETs. I, I used DigiKey's uh, parametric search to just come up with a selection to I, so I can show the different properties. That is nice and simple. Uh, we did. I did end up using the one here on the top. No big surprise, I put it on the top. Um, and when we look at it, we find that when we go to use it, it's going to have 0.08 ohms when it's turned on and that it only takes a volt to turn it on. And that's great because that means I could still turn on a 2.5 volt source because I've got greater than a volt. <laughs> Look, I get 20 amps out of it. The downside is uh, I got to spend a buck and a half and uh, a TO220 case. If I go to uh, TO92 cases, the resistance jumps up. So there's two, some time when that will be helpful. Uh, and that's because the geometry inside the TO220, big wide flat die allows you to lower the resistance. Lots of stuff in parallel. Um, so here, here's just kind of the trade-offs. You can see our resistances, our amperages, and, and even the cost. This one's a real low RDS, but you pay for it. So we're picking the uh, 6020, and uh, it's got 0.08 ohms when it's turned on. And let's see what that looks like in real life. Here's our simple little circuit comprising of just the P-channel FET. The bias resistor is right there. Right here is our input voltage, about 5 volts. Here's our output voltage. This is a 5 ohm power resistor. So we've got a 5 ohm load on 5 volts, which should give us an amp. If you remember that uh, power equals I squared R, 1 amp squared is still 1 times R is 5. So that means this is dissipating 5 watts. Uh, since this resistance is way less than 5 uh, ohms, it's not hardly dissipating anything. But this thing's getting a little warm. So all we have to do to turn this on is I've got my gate terminals here and I'm going to short them together. The blue LED turns, tells us it's on. And if we look at the output voltage, I've got 4.96 with a 10 ohm resistor load. And the input or the voltage drop across this part, there's my missing voltage. If I add all that up, it's very close to 5. So I am losing, in, in this case, the RDS on must be uh, 0.057 ohms so uh, a little less than the 0.08 in the spec which was an absolute max uh, but how about that I can I got my nice 5 volts output um, from one simple little part and just uh, grounding the gate since the FET itself is high impedance uh, the gate on that I can actually control with an IO line so that means I can switch on and off this 10 ohm load uh, I'm sorry 5 ohm load that equals 1 amp 5 watts of power and I can do it with an IO port one last little uh, idea that we can do with this circuit is to make it latching, like a push button on. Uh, so here I've added a transistor, an NPN, in this case a 2N3904, and I'm biasing it from the output so that once this is on, this, re this uh, current flow through the resistor, voltage through the resistor equals current, will bias this on and pull this to ground. So we ground this to turn it on, and then once the voltage arrives, it will hold it on. 
So uh, a push on. We could also short from here to here if you wanted to, if this isn't a big load, and just get, again, the voltage over there in the same way, and, and, and it'll turn this on. Uh, to turn it off, then, we need to steal that current away from this NPN transistor by grounding this. And by ground, I mean you got to get it under the 0 0.6 volts, 0 0.5, whatever it takes to turn this on, um, to ground it out. So we've got push here on, push here off. Now, let me say, though, uh, this doesn't mean this is a production-ready circuit. If I were doing this for real, I'd put a protection diode here in case there was some capacitance out here and this voltage for a second was higher than this. It'd flow around the FET instead of damage it. And uh, I might use an FET here instead of a transistor, and then I have more ways I can, I have less current flow, and I can have a higher threshold voltage uh, instead of trying to ground out the base emitter junction. Uh, this is to show an example. So with that said, let me show you this working in real life. Here's the circuit where I've added the uh, 2N3904 right here, and the resistor up to the output, the bias on resistor. And so by shorting out the gate, it turns on. You can see the LED here. We can turn it off, on, off. And then something interesting, uh, using my good old finger, I can actually turn it on too, using just stray. So, uh, but let me show you this actually powering a circuit. So I've chosen a Raspberry Pi to demonstrate a push to turn on. And, and uh, I'm gonna say, the hard part's actually knowing when to safely turn it off. I'll leave that to you guys. You could put a timer on the output that you toggle a, toggle a one-minute timer timeout on a 555 and uh, then start your shutdown sequence or whatnot. Um, or some devices don't can have power removed just jerked out from under, depending on what it can be. So let's give this a shot. All right. And let's go to, you can see it booting right there. As a designer, I have a bag of tools. Uh, maybe I have like 127 go-to circuits or thoughts or concepts, and then uh, I engineer what I need for the next project, and sometimes I add that to my bag of tools, sometimes I throw it out. Uh, so hopefully this is something that, uh, at least as a placeholder, if you want to add this to your bag of tools, this is a high side switch. This is also a cool property of FETs low on resistance. You can do lots of things uh, with driving power, motors, all kinds of things. But this was just a quick example. So Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Hope to see you on the next one and uh, we'll figure out what to talk about then.